Okay, it's now the top of the hour, so let's go ahead and get started. Welcome to today's webinar. Today we're going to be talking about how you can maximize both free and paid features of Google to drive more business to your firm in 2024. So thanks for taking the time to join us today. Um, just a few housekeeping matters before we get started. This webinar is being recorded and will be sent to you via email shortly after, so there's no need to take notes unless you'd like to do so. And in the event that you're having any issues with the audio or, audio or visual components of this webinar, please use the raised hand feature in the GoToWebinar control panel, or you can type us a message and we'll try to get that resolved for you as quickly as possible. So my name is Drew Mancini, and I am the Digital Marketing Manager here at Lawlytics. I have a background as a marketing consultant for solos and small law firms and digital marketing practices, as well as branding. And now I continue to enjoy helping to make marketing more accessible and enjoyable for attorneys by helping to create those resources that ultimately work to de demystify successful marketing practices. So let's get into it. So we all rely on Google to conduct research, compare our options, and make our decisions. And that includes your potential clients. So if you are developing your firm's web presence or you're looking to grow your business this year, you might be feeling a bit unsure of what exactly Google wants or needs from your website. So as you organize your business goals for 2024, it's helpful to know how you can make Google a viable marketing tool for your digital marketing, for your digital presence. So using Google search engine traffic to successfully drive business to your firm can be very low cost, but it's going to take some time and requires careful strategy. So in today's webinar, we're going to be covering the steps to Google your law firm the right way, which is a great place to get started, um, how to optimize your Google business profile listing, when and how a paid advertising budget can benefit your marketing, and then the ultimate low cost approach to search engine optimization. So let's start first with Googling your law firm. Before a new client makes the decision to hire you, you can expect that they will Google you first in order to feel confident in their choice. So if you're not sure what they might see when they Google you or your law firm, it's definitely time to Google yourself. And I would say performing a Google search on yourself at least once a month is a good and manageable cadence in order for you to maintain that effective online presence. And overall, the purpose of this is to help you stay on top of any information inaccuracies that might be on the internet and to also help you realistically manage any unwanted information that might be out there. And when I say inaccuracies, I mean things like an outdated firm address or an outdated phone number, or maybe your website URL is incorrect on a certain Yelp listing. Any of those inaccuracies should be sought out and remedied because you want to make sure that you're always maximizing your firm's reach online. And if a potential client is having trouble getting in touch with you because of that inaccurate phone number, website, or whatever it is, they're probably just going to move on to their next best option. They're not really going to hunt you down for the most part. And in addition to inaccuracies, you'll also want to keep your ear to the ground for any unwanted information. So because Google is constantly scraping the internet for information and making connections based on what it knows, it's pretty common for Google to pick up things from sites that you might not think would show up on a Google feed about you. Um, so including social media pages, for example. So you wanna make sure that you're also keeping an eye out for things that just you might not want connected to your firm's brand or your firm itself. So I'm going to be walking you through all of this in a bit more detail, but to get started, you're going to want to open a new window on your browser, either in incognito mode or by clearing your browser cache. And you can, of course, Google this to see the exact steps you can take, but if you're not sure, I'm just going to walk you through it briefly. So in this next slide we have google chrome so if you are oops, if you are a google chrome user you can open an incognito window using those three dots that are at the top right of your uh, browser window and then just select new incognito window and then you'll be able to google yourself without any um, previous cookies coming into play and messing with your google search results and then if you're a Safari user, um, you can go up to the top left of your screen and go under File, New Private Window, and then same thing applies when you Google 
yourself or your law firm's name, it won't have any previous um, location or uh, previous searches to kind of uh, cloud that search result. Oh, and that's for Safari. Okay, and then so however you access your cleared cache search window, the next thing you're going to do is going through this list one by one to thoroughly Google yourself. And so don't worry about, you can take a screenshot of this, but don't worry about taking notes or anything because I'll be sending you this recording. But this is just everything that you can do to Google yourself to make sure you're kind of hitting every single point and really being thorough with this. Um, and in this stage, you're going to be reviewing the first page of results for any misinformation or red flags. And then to go a step further, you're going to want to check out the images tab on Google for any pictures that you wouldn't want to appear publicly. And then if you've done that, you've looked at the first results and you've looked at the images for all of these different um, Google searches and you don't find anything out of the ordinary, then you're in the clear for this month, and then you can mark your calendar to do this again in about one month from now. The next step you're going to take is to double check all of the current places in which your firm's information is listed online. So these could be firm directories, a business directory, or anywhere else that your information might be. As I mentioned earlier, this step is to help you stay on top of any places in which your contact information might be listed inaccurately. So you never know when or how a potential client is going to try to get in touch with you. So it's important to make sure that they have all of the right information on the first try or else again, they might move on. And then the last few tips I will leave you with when you're Googling yourself is to first go ahead and set up Google alerts for your name and your firm name. Also bonus points if you set up an alert for your local competition to keep tabs on them as well, as well as keywords for local news that you might want to keep up with. I won't walk you through this process for setting up Google alerts, but it's very easy to set it up for yourself. And it really is just that shortcut to getting all of the updates of when you or your firm name or whatever you've set up an alert for is, um, is trending on Google or it's um, a new listing on Google, uh, you'll get an email for, um, depending on the cadence that you set, maybe it's once a week or once a month, you'll get an email of a summary of all of those times that you've appeared on Google as of late. So it's a really easy way to kind of keep up with everything. And then next you want to check in on your social media privacy settings. Just because you want to keep your online presence as professional and streamlined as possible, you do want to avoid Google mixing in your personal images and videos in with the ones that you want to represent your firm. So if your social media profiles are already set to private, then that helps protect your images a little bit better. And then just keep in mind that Facebook has a couple of tiers of privacy, so just make sure you're paying attention to that and carefully selecting those privacy settings. And lastly, I'm sure you're wondering what you can do if you are doing all of these checks and if there's any information that is either unwanted or inaccurate in your Google searches. And if the information is from a site or a platform that you have direct access to, such as your social media profiles, you will be free to delete this information or again, change your privacy settings to remove this. However, if the information is on a website or platform that you don't have direct access to, say for example, Yelp, you'll need to contact them and request to have it removed. And although that will require a few additional steps and it's a little bit um, annoying, uh, it is an important part of managing your digital presence. So let's get into optimizing your Google Business Profile. Google Business Profile was previously known as Google My Business some months ago, and it's a free business listing that's intended for local businesses to manage their online presence on both Google Search and Google Maps. And what makes it so important for local businesses and small law firms in particular is that after your listing is created, your firm's listing shows up directly in searches and Google Maps. And this means when potential clients are using Google to find a law firm near them, they can directly toggle through their options side by side with 
the aid of handy information like client reviews, firm photos, and any recent updates right there in Maps. So it's making it really easy for them to look through their local available options, but then it's also a great opportunity for you to stand out from the local competition and really showcase what makes your firm the best option. And before we get into optimizing your listing, you'll first need to, of course, create one if you haven't already. You'll need a Google account, and after logging into your Google account, you'll be automatically logged into your, into your Google Business Profile Manager, where you'll add your firm to Google. And then from there, there's going to be a bunch of customizations that you'll need to fill out to completion. So to get the most out of your listing, you're going to want to fill out all of those customizations, again, to 100% completion and with 100% accuracy. That's honestly the most important part. And I'm going to link our guide to Google Business Profile in the chat for you all as well. This is a direct PDF download so that um, you can access a checklist that'll take you through all of these customizations just to make sure that you're not missing anything if this is um, your opportunity to set up your listing for your first time. And in addition to those customizations, there's also a few other helpful things that you can do to maximize your listing. And the first is to mirror your listings if you have multiple firm addresses. This is a very common scenario for law firms. Um, to have multiple offices either in the same state or multiple states. If that's the case for you, you want to make sure that you have one Google business profile listing for each of your physical addresses and you want to make them as identical as possible. And then next you'll want to stay on top of your client reviews. It's best to assign a follow up date with each satisfied client after their case closes to request a testimonial for your Google business profile. I've seen um, a lot of attorneys just do this through email. They'll email the regular um, you know, closing spiel and any documents that needs to go to the client and then leave a direct link to the Google business profile for the client to leave a review. But it's just um, recommended that you set aside some time each week to look over any new new reviews as well and craft responses so while you're requesting all these reviews you also need to be paying attention to what's coming in and um, responding to those and um, being active because it that'll also make a difference for a potential client looking through all of the different google business profile listings and all of their local options if they see that you're active and responding to reviews that just um, makes a good impression on people. You'll also wanna consider adding photos to your listing if you have any that are recent and high quality. These can be a variety of things. I've seen um, attorneys do headshots or staff photos and also pictures of their office space. Just in general, including these visuals will help your listing pop next to the others. Again, when you're looking at all of these different options, the eye is just gonna to gravitate more towards the one that is more visually appealing. And lastly, take advantage of the free Google Business Profile Analytics that can give you some insight into who's looking at your listing and then what they're gravitating towards. This can help you identify larger trends in client search behavior that you can ultimately implement into your current website marketing strategy. So for example, um, if your Google Business Profile analytics are telling you that you're getting um, a lot of um, clicks on an update that you made about um, what to do if you get in a car accident, then you know that your potential clients are really curious about this topic, they're really interested in it, and it's also pertaining to them. And so um, that little bit of analytics can maybe prompt you to create a full series about what to do um, after a car accident, a, a full blog series, for example, or maybe you make a video um, and you're really just kind of letting the, um, the interests of your potential clients lead your way or lead your marketing strategy in that way. And then in this next part of today's webinar, I did want to talk a little bit about paid advertising especially since today's topic is centered around Google and how to see success with Google, it's important to touch on paid advertising and whether this is going to be a necessary marketing avenue for your practice. 
And before we can get into how your firm can actually incorporate paid advertising into your marketing plan, I want to first review the difference between organic traffic your website generates versus the paid traffic that you can purchase. And organic website traffic, for one, is primarily generated through content-based SEO strategies, and it tends to be your most cost-effective digital marketing tactic that typically doesn't require that constant financial upkeep that paid advertising does often. By investing in content-based SEO, which involves creating high-quality, informative content that resonates with your potential clients, you can work to build a foundation for a sustainable and long-term growth for your online marketing. And then this is kind of twofold. So for one, search results that appear organically on search tend to be more trusted by users as they perceive these results as more credible and a bit less invasive compared to paid advertisements. Honestly, just think about your own behavior when you're using Google. It's very likely that you tend to reflexively scroll past those top advertisements to get to organic search results if you've Googled something directly in the search. And then the second part of this twofold is that high quality and informative content will work to answer the questions of your potential clients. And then that works to build trust with them and help your firm develop a stronger brand loyalty and referral network, which are going to be extremely valuable assets for your firm. And then on the other hand, you have paid advertising website traffic, which can deliver quicker and more immediate results. Namely, it's going to get your phone ringing, and that's what makes it an attractive option for law firms that are looking for something that's a super instant boost in online visibility. Paid ads can help you target specific keywords as well, um, as well as demographics, and allow you to access more of a precision in your marketing efforts. However, those avenues are, they tend to be extremely costly, especially in competitive legal niches. So think about a personal injury practice, for example. It would cost an astronomical amount to compete for keywords like personal injury or trucking accidents in your local area. And if you've tried to do this, then you already know. And this cost keeps on rising, especially if you are located in a larger city with a lot more competition. Additionally, the issue with paid advertising sometimes is that the moment that you stop paying for the ads, the traffic tends to dwindle just as quickly as it started. So ultimately, it is a bit less sustainable compared to organic traffic. And for small law firms with limited budgets, that heavy reliance on paid advertising can significantly strain your finances, which is just something to keep in mind. If you are still interested in, in incorporating a paid advertising strategy into your marketing, there is a good way to go about this. And we're going to mainly be talking about um, all of these steps to incorporating it, which will really just help you strike a balance between organic and paid advertising avenues. So first, um, incorporating a paid advertising budget into your digital marketing strategy as a solo or small law firm can be a strategic move to boost your online visibility and attract potential clients, of course, but it's really going to be about how you maintain that balance in your approach to complement your existing content-based SEO strategy. So you really need that content-based SEO strategy to, to pair with the paid advertising strategy and then create something that's really effective. So first you'll wanna start with clear goals and objectives. You want to figure out if you're looking to increase website traffic, generate leads, or improve brand awareness, for example. So be specific about what you want to achieve because this will guide your advertising efforts and help you measure your success. Next, you'll want to create a budget. It's recommended that you allocate funds based on your objectives and expected returns, of course, and just know that this might require some adjusting and readjusting along the way. And also keep in mind that when we mentioned in the previous slide that paid advertising can provide quicker results, but it's going to require that ongoing investment. And then third, you want to identify the most effective advertising platforms for your law firm. 
while Google ads and social media advertising, such as Facebook ads or LinkedIn ads are very popular choices, you wanna do still some of your own research on which platforms your target audience frequents and tailor your strategy accordingly. And then once you've identified your platforms, take some time to conduct keyword research and identify the most relevant and cost-effective keywords for your campaigns. This is gonna help you reach your potential clients online and of course, maximize your budget. And then finally, you're ready to create engaging ad content. You'll wanna create, or sorry, you wanna craft compelling ad copy that resonates with your potential clients and then also encourages them to take action. So ensure your messaging aligns with your law firm's values and what makes your firm unique. That's gonna be kind of the key to creating something that is compelling and that is really going to catch the eye of your potential clients. And then after all of that is ready, you need to create dedicated landing pages that are optimized for conversion. Ensure that the landing page content matches the ad content and also includes clear calls to action to guide potential clients. And just a little note on landing pages, if you're not super familiar with these and the paid advertising realm, a landing page is really just a unique URL that's ultimately connected to your website, but it's a different URL than your website homepage, for example, because it is connected to that paid ad and that's where the potential client is landing initially. And from there, they can explore the rest of your website, but you wanna have that separate landing page because that's really what helps you track the performance of your paid advertising. So if you just were measuring homepage visits, that might get clouded with other um, data that's coming from other Google searches or people putting in your URL directly. So you wanna have that dedicated landing page to make sure that you know exactly how your ad is performing. And once everything has gone live, you have your ads, you have your landing page, you have everything. From there, it's really just going to be about monitoring your progress and adjusting any strategy accordingly. So for example, you want to keep an eye on performance metrics such as your click-through rates, conversion rates, and your overall return on investment. For the most part, you won't need to do this manually and can rely on analytics tools that are provided by your chosen advertising platform. And then if certain campaigns or keywords aren't delivering the desired results, you'll wanna consider reallocating your budget or refining your ad content. And part of this process may include testing different ad variations and strategies to identify what's going to work best for your practice. Ultimately, while incorporating a paid advertising strategy into your firm's current digital marketing can offer an excellent support to your firm's online visibility, your best defense against the big advertising budget budgets of your local competitors really brings us into our next and final section of today's webinar, which is the ultimate low-cost approach to search engine optimization. And that is going to be creating high-quality written content, which we have touched a bit on before. But what does this really mean? How do we do it? Let's get, let's get into it. So before we get into how you can approach writing high quality content for your website, we need to back up a little and discuss the significance of this for your visibility on Google. Google returns search queries in a highly rational fashion. When a potential client conducts a search, Google then suits, sorts through all of the available pages, and then it tries to return the best and most useful information that is related to that search. So every website that's on Google is held to a certain quality standard that's going to determine how they rank for certain searches compared to other websites. So even if you are trying to match all of your um, potential clients, uh, potential searches, it's really gonna be about that quality of your web pages that's going to help you appear further up. So overall, Google's EEAT quality standards are simplified to four categories. So the EEAT stands for experience, expertise, authoritativeness, and trustworthiness. Experience really just refers to the content's ability to exemplify some sort of firsthand experience by the author, and expertise is 
typically defined broadly, but Google notes that formal expertise is important for YMYL websites, which are um, law firm websites. The authoritativeness and trustworthiness of your website, which is the A and the T of EAT, is likely to be informed by the level of experience and expertise that you're bringing to your content creation. And ultimately, high quality written content that is original, accurate, comprehensive, clearly communicated and professionally presented is all going to help you represent your expertise to Google. And then getting into the YMYL, law firm websites are held to a higher standard of EEAT because they're categorized as your money, your life pages, also known as the YMYL. And they're categorized this way due to the potential effect on the happiness, health, or well-being of a search user. So a YMYL page will have to display a satisfactory level of authority and trust that is achieved through high quality content. And once you understand the search quality guidelines Google has in place for you, or in, in, in place for your website, then you can begin to shift your focus to how you can target your ideal potential clients online. And this is really going to be about understanding their search behavior. And that is knowing that a majority of them will be doing some independent research on their legal matter before making the decision to call your firm. So that's really the intent, that's the motivation. And when they're doing their research, excuse me, they're likely asking Google longer and complex questions, contrary to what we or how we interacted with Google in very early days. So for example, if a potential client just got in a car accident and they're trying to determine their next step, it's much more likely that they'll search something like, what do I do after I got rear-ended, rather than something like car accident attorney Seattle. So in the early days of Google, you needed to be very um, clear and concise with your keywords in order to get matched with the right content and the right pages. But now the way people use Google is they just ask a question and Google is much more sophisticated in matching them with relevant search results. And so your website's content needs to also reflect that. It doesn't really need to be this um, buttoned up um, list or the source of keywords. It really should reflect um, more of a casual, um, conversational way of speaking and asking questions that you would see in your potential clients. So really how they come into your office and ask all of their uh, legal questions, that's what your website content needs to reflect. Because if they're asking it of you in your office, they're definitely asking it of Google in their own homes. And then lastly, high quality website content is going to help to support these types of long form questions with answers that also build trust and authority with your potential clients. So not only are you mirroring that way of asking a question, but you should also still be keeping in mind that these need to be extremely high quality answers that make them feel satisfied with the information that they have consumed. Now let's move on to what high quality content actually looks like. High quality content tends to be very information dense and is going to thoroughly answer the questions that brought the potential client to your website in the first place. You really want to think of your website as your opportunity to position yourself and your firm as experts in your area of law or your profession, as well as um, positioning yourself as a thought leader in your subject matter. At the same time, you're also maximizing your reach on Google by creating more opportunities for relevant and local search queries to match with your website content. But all that being said, you can't just write a bunch of content and keywords in your lawyer voice and expect that to be effective in attracting clients. Instead, your content needs to be written in plain language that appeals to a broad audience. And if you do need to ever explain anything legal or complex, just be sure to make or be sure to do it um, as plainly as possible and provide sufficient clarification. And lastly, I want to talk about the Lawlet exclusion that is helping attorneys create pages of high quality content in just one sitting. Lawlytics offers the ultimate content solution for attorneys who are looking to maximize their presence on Google this year. 
our smart content generation tool is already built into the Love Lakes dashboard, and it gives you access to over 320 practice area topics across 20 practice areas that are ready for you to customize and publish your website with ease. Each piece of content has been engineered for optimal performance on Google with features such as internal link opportunities and optimized subtitles, and it's already curated to help build trust and authority with your potential clients. Plus, we're always adding new content to the library, and it also gives members a quick way to request new topics that they'd like to see in the library. So in our tour today, I'll show you around the tool a little bit and give you a feel for what I'm talking about. So before we move on to the tour, um, I did want to show you a bit about our new website design tool. As you know, your firm's website is the foundation of your digital marketing strategy. Um, if you're trying to really succeed with Google this year, you of course need to complement it with a strong website and that's how people are going to actually find you. Um, and it's going to anchor your marketing efforts in the new year as you strive toward growing your business. And then now you can get an instant firsthand look at what your new website could look like with us using our new website design tool. Um, this tool lets you browse various layouts, customize the site to your firm's branding and colors, and you can even toggle through different image options to get a feel of what your new website could look like. I'm gonna drop a link in the chat for you all to check that out. And then I'll also just briefly show you on my screen, if you're curious, what you can expect. So this is, yes, this is the website builder. So when you um, click into that URL, this is what you're going to see. And um, right away, this is just a sample law firm website. And it's just kind of my blank slate for now. You can see I have just a, um, placeholder number, I'm sampled law firm, this is just placeholder logo. But when I go into the customize um, toolbar, I can customize my law firm name. So I can say through law firm and then um, customize my other information, choose a logo or choose a file for my logo if I already have one of those, um, update my phone number to my law firm's phone number. And then as you can see, everything that I'm filling out is being automatically updated in the preview. And then from there, I might wanna check out some different layouts and envision my law firm in different colors and different options that fit with my branding, maybe check out a different font as well as different images. So these are all just like ways that you can put yourself in the shoes of a new website and get an idea of what it can look like with us. You can also see how it'll look like in a, or on a tablet or on mobile, um, just to get a feel for things. And then from there, you can schedule a demo or CR pricing. Um, it's just fun if you wanna check it out and just um, if you're considering a new website, you wanna look at some of your options. And then to um, get into our brief tour today, uh, I wanted to show you behind the scenes of a Lawlytics website. So you've seen the front end, this is the back end. So if you remember with us, this is going to be your dashboard. This is where you're going to access all of the elements of your website for making edits and changes. As you can see, there's shortcuts um, to getting into the content library, making a new blog post, case result page, um, a shortcut to our blog, which has um, plenty of helpful resources for you. And then um, you have all of your tabs up here that allow you to go and check out your how your leads are doing, um, get into any sort of library because you can store um, images and videos here, look at any uh, website performance reports, connect with the network of attorneys that are also with Lawlytics. Um, again, get into the content library. This is just kind of your landing spot. So let's get into one of our websites. This is just a, an example website for you all, but um, say you had multiple websites with us, um, they would all appear here in your dashboard, and then you can just easily click into whichever website you want to make edits on. And then when you're brought into that website, 
Um, this is just kind of the back end of everything. So what you see on the right here is my homepage and all of the content that I have on my homepage. And then on the left is just a vertical version of my horizontal website navigation bar. So these are um, all of my various pages and tabs. And to give you an idea of what we're looking at here, this is the front end of this example website. So as you can see, this is my navigation bar across the top. And then I'm seeing it along the side. So say I wanted to um, add a page or rearrange any of these pages. Um, it's really easy to make these edits and you don't need any sort of programming. So for example, if I wanted to feature estate planning above criminal defense, all I would have to do is click and drag that and put it above criminal defense. And then once I click preview site, it's going to automatically update for me on the front end. So super simple changes like that, that might take your, um, your agency like a week or even a day, um, you can just do for yourself instantly with Lawlytics, which is super convenient for a lot of busy attorneys. Um, another thing I wanted to show you is getting into the content libraries. So um, if I want to make a new page, I can select to create a blank one, um, which is really easy to use. It's basically like using any sort of text editor or I can use a content template and go into our content library. So um, inside the content library, I can search for any topic that I'm looking for, or I can browse through. Um, I have all of my practice areas here, as well as a view of popular pages. So say I was a personal injury attorney, and I wanted to um, create a new uh, page for my practice area section of my website. Um, I have all of these different topic categories, auto accidents, class action, metal, medical malpractice, personal injury. Um, I have all of these different topics to choose from. As I mentioned earlier, if you scroll to the bottom of any of these, you can message us and request a new topic as we're building this at a consistent base. Um, but going into one of these, let's go into defective conditions. And then right away, I can see the preview of the content. On the left, I have all of the ways that this uh, topic has or topic card has been optimized. So for example, it's got link opportunities for me, optimized subtitles, it helps build authority and trust with my potential clients, and it helps clarify the legal process. And then on the right is the preview of the content, and then everything in blue is what I'm going to be customizing. So once I'm okay with this topic and I'm ready to start customizing, I just press use this template. And as you can see, my fields were already filled out. This is because you can save your entries from a previous customization so that when you start a new topic card, you don't have to do any extra work. All of your information is pre-saved for you and it just cuts down on even more time. But as you can see, everything that was filled out to the left um, is customized in blue for me on the right. And then once I'm happy with all of those customizations, I'll press complete and then we're back in this back end area where I can change my title of my practice area page, um, figure out where it's going to be nested on my website, make any um, changes to the copy of this page, maybe add an image or a hyperlink or a click to call phone number or an anchor link or a video. Um, the options are um, pretty unlimited with this. And then once I'm satisfied, I can save it as a draft, save it for later. Or once I press publish, it will be ready for me on the front end of my website instantly. So um, just a little bit about the content library. Um, again, uh, attorneys are really able to create pages of content in just one sitting with this. Um, so if you are starting a brand new website or you're looking to add a practice area to your firm, um, this can get you kind of zero to launch very quickly. Um, and then the last thing I'll show you before I answer any questions um, is the <clears throat> our forms. So we can go into libraries and then forms. So what a form is, is basically like you, you've seen it on many websites. It's a contact form. It's a sign up for our newsletter form. It's a get a free consultation form. Um, these are really easy to create on the Lawlytics as well as customize. Um, 
you'll know you probably already know that forms are an excellent way to get leads from your website and from that online organic traffic or even paid traffic. So it's a great way to capture them and you might want to um, consider creating multiple different types of forms or putting them in different places throughout your website to see where you can kind of capture them, um, capture the lead. So creating a new one with us is pretty straightforward. All you're gonna do is give it a title, um, some intro text and a response message, and then um, you can redirect them if there's a place that you wanted to um, send them once the form is complete. And then to create your custom form fields, you're just going to um, fill out these fields, um, designate what type of um, submission you want it to be for that specific field, require it or not require it, um, shuffle these around with a drag and drop. It's really easy to do. And then you can also, my favorite part of this is to assign a recipient. So if there's someone in your office that directly handles intakes, you can make sure that every single form submission is getting sent directly to them and then they can deal with it and things stay super streamlined. And then you can also link it with your um, case management system. As you can see, this one has the option to link it with Clio, for example to keep everything super organized that way as well. So let's get back to our slideshow. Um, that is going to be the end of our presentation today. If you have any questions about having a successful website with Lolitics, or you'd like to see a more in-depth demo of the technology, please feel free to reach out to us using any of the methods that you see here. Um, I do have a few questions, so I'm gonna read through these and hopefully answer those for you all. Um, I question from Rashida. It says, just as some websites list logos of affiliations like Wealth Council or ABA, can Lolitics be listed as well? I believe, I think I know what you're saying. Um, and we do allow for, so we don't have like a um, very direct way of presenting badges on websites, but it's really easy for us to do that for you. All you would need to do is reach out to our support team and we would get those badges displayed for you. Um, I think it's just like slightly more complicated, which is why we don't have you guys do it. But um, yes, if there was any logo or badge or anything like that that you wanted displayed on your website, we can do that. And then um, do we integrate with Calendly? Yes, we've had lots of members integrate their forms with Calendly or web pages with Calendly um, for easy scheduling um, and easy ways to set up consults. So yes, definitely. And then last question, do the sites have options to translate content to different languages? And well, I'll there's a two part question, so I'll answer this one first. So different languages, um, I would say yes, um, it's a little more involved than something that's just like automatic. I'm sure you've maybe used the Google Translate feature where um, you'll be on a web page and it'll just automatically translate. It's just a little bit more involved than that, but we do have an option for that. And then is there any option for ADA accessibility? And um, yes, so all of our websites are already ADA compliant, but we also have a uh, we integrate with a free integration called UserWay, and that integration, if you want to put it on your website, um, it kind of lives in the corner of the web page, and the web visitor can click on it, and they can access um, additional accessibility options like bigger font or contrasting colors, things like that. So yes, awesome. Thank you for your questions. Okay, well with that, if I don't have any more questions, um, I'm going to go ahead and close out the presentation, but thank you so much for jo joining us, and we will see you next time. Have a good one.